All right, hello everybody and welcome back to the Super Light Coupe build. In this video, we are going to discuss squaring up the Super Light Coupe chassis. Okay, so stay tuned. All right, so this is more of a discussion rather than sort of a step-by-step -step approach, but let me sort of bring everybody up to date where we're at. You know, looking at the chassis, I mean, it looks like we're sort of going backwards here. No wheels, no cooling tubes, no fuel tank, but the cooling tubes and the fuel tank are at the welder. Uh, last episode, we put the oil tank on the car, and really the next step is to run the brake lines and, and add the rotors and, and mount the calipers and the parking, the parking brake as well. Uh, before I do that, though, I really wanted to make sure the chassis was squared up. In an earlier video, I showed sort of the initial ride height adjustment. Uh, and I, I sort of showed how I went about doing that. I've refined my approach, and I'll, I'll cover a little bit of that in this video. Uh, but when I had the body on the car initially... I had a hunch something was not quite right. You know, the wheels on the passenger side of the car lined up beautifully. And the on the driver's side, it, it looked like that, that front uh, left wheel was a little too far forward. So, you know, before I put the calipers and the rotors on the, you know, on the uh, uprights, I wanted to take another set of measurements. So, you know, essentially what I did, and, and my goal here is really to avoid having to spend hundreds of dollars on an alignment system and just use some basic tools to get it close so that I can do an initial alignment, get the body on the car, and then ultimately, you know, I could have it professionally aligned. So anyway, uh, the first measurement I took, you know, I basically, you know, I created a, a point. You could see the, the rear stud on the on the rear the rear hub, and I ran a tape measure to the uh, to the front hub. And now this is after I reset the ride height. I reset zero cambering caster, uh, not zero caster, but zero toe in and zero camber, and. You know, I came up with the measurement right here, and then I did it on the other side, and the other side was a quarter inch longer. So the driver's side was a quarter inch longer, which, you know, sort of explained why maybe the wheels didn't look that good or fit that well in the body on the driver's side. So I took a bunch of measurements. Uh, this is an initial drawing, but, you know, from stud to stud, the left side was a hundred and a quarter inches. The passenger side was just a hundred inches. So we were a quarter of an inch short. So when you're a quarter of an inch short, the problem is you just don't know, you know, which axle is off. You know, is it, is the back fixed properly and it's all, you know, it's a quarter inch off in the front wheel or is it, you know, a combination of the front and back. So I took a bunch of measurements and I figured out, you know, sort of where, where I was gaining some length on the right side of the car. So we're going to discuss that in a minute. Okay, so basically what I did is, when, you know, once I realized that one side was longer than the other, I, I did a bit of reading and there was another builder and he recommended to review an article on longacreracing.com and they have an article on squaring up a chassis and you know I do recommend it, it's a short article it's a few pages and it gives you some simple uh, tips to, to, to square up a chassis so this is sort of my approach and once again you know I, I just you know, A, I can't take this car to anybody right now, and B, I don't want to invest a lot of money in a bunch of fancy alignment tools. I, I just don't think it's necessary. 
you know, given the geometry of the super light car, you know, there's a lot of flat surfaces you can measure against on the car, the suspension uh, uprights are square. So, and I'll show some of these measurements in a little bit, but essentially this is what I did. So I got these two 72 inch uh, levels from Harbor Freight. They're like 20 bucks each and they actually are straight as an arrow. So I figured, you know, I'll clamp it on the back of the chassis because I figure this is totally square. And then there are two jig holes provided by the factory. And I just put these, uh, you know, M6 screwing here. And then I, I just uh, rested the level, the level against it. And I started taking measurements. So I measured from, from here to the back. And it turns out the chassis is 3 16 inch uh, longer uh, from front to back on the driver's side. Now, I originally mentioned that I was off by a quarter of an inch, not 3 16 inch. And it turned out uh, I had an extra thread showing on this uh, A arm. So I, I, I turned this in one full turn. And that sort of, uh, sort of pivoted, you know, pivoted the top back. So, so the chassis is three sixteenths inch longer on the driver's side, and the wheelbase right now is three sixteenths inch longer as well. So, uh, getting back to, I, I guess, my point here. So, I took a bunch of measurements from here to here from here to here, from here to the middle section, and then the middle section to the back, and the back to the front, and the back to over here. And I came up with a new drawing. So you always check front to back and then back to front. And it turns out, you know, measuring from the front to the end of the foot box, I'm two, um, a sixteenth, two sixteenths, uh, I got to get my bearings here, uh, a sixteenth inch longer. So I pick up a sixteenth of an inch from that, the, the jig hole here to the edge of the foot box, then from the front of the car to the back of the passenger compartment. I pick up two sixteenths inch, so that means this section's a sixteenth of an inch longer. And then when I go from all the way from the back uh, to the front, I pick up the final sixteenths inch, and I verified that by measuring from the back rail to the back of the the back of the passenger compartment is eleven sixteenths, and this is ten sixteenths. Okay, so I used that method and it basically told me that that this wheel is uh, 16th of an inch more forward than this wheel. So I decided to move this one back and then this one back an eighth of an inch, this one back a 16th of an inch. And the way you do it on these cars, uh, basically, you know, back when I set the suspension up, you know, you have these washers. So I simply took a sixteenth of an inch washer, I moved it from this side to this side, both top and bottom, and it shifted this back, so that was really nice. Now the front's a little different because the front rear lower A arm is fixed. So this A arm is fixed and that's by design. Uh, just to keep every, everything in I, I guess aligned properly. So I pulled this out, I added a full turn here, a full turn here, and that pivots the arm back an eighth of an inch. So now I've got the suspension fully squared and I think I'm ready to go. Okay, uh, let's see. Couple other things to cover. I'll cover it in the next segment and then we'll call it a wrap.
Okay, well this will be the last segment and I wanted to cover just, uh, you know, how I, how I know that uh, I'm at zero toe and zero camber uh, for the suspension. And we do that so that the body gets centered properly on the car. And the ride height is easy to calculate. I mean, you know, I just have a simple ruler here. And I have all these like square edges like off the, you know, off the wheel bearing. And then I sort of mark this line here. And then I transfer it over to the other side. And I do the same thing for the back. So setting the ride height is easy. I did it because I'm using these, you know, these uh, anti-droop rods. So I can do all the suspension work without having the shocks and springs in the car which I, I think uh, really helps out. Uh, the other thing is from a toe standpoint, you know, I essentially just use a big, you know, a big uh, uh, T-square or L-square, and I put it up against, you know, places that I know are, are straight on the uprights and the chassis. So this, you know, this is all of about nine bucks. Uh, this is 20 bucks, so got some basic tools here uh, so I can set the ride height with a ruler. I set the toe with an L square to zero, uh, you know, and the level. That works good. And then the front, basically what I do is I clamp, I clamp the long level onto the upright and then I measure it against the chassis and you can know it's zero. Now what will happen is uh, when I go to align the car, I'll create a string box outside, you know, outside the uh, chassis and I'll measure from the hub. Then I'll measure from the sides of the frame because they're nice and straight. And I can create my string box very easily and then set toe in. So that won't be a problem. And then lastly, I just use a, a digital level. And for now, you know, I've got the uprights and I even have the, you know, the, you know, this one happens to 89.9, 90 degrees. So, so some basic tools and you really can, can set up a, a super light coupe chassis very well. Okay, so I think we're going to call this a wrap. Uh, the next thing we're going to work on are the brake lines and getting the brakes on the car. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care.